Welcome to another episode of Treasures from the Orient. So recently I went out and bought a bunch of gear from AliExpress, which is the Chinese Amazon, because I thought, hey, everyone's always talking about fake stuff in China, uh, tactical equipment, gear, weapon lights, our stuff, spiritist stuff, and I thought I'm just going to go on there and buy one of everything. So I spent about $600 buying various items, I've waited a few weeks, and stuff has started to arrive. I don't know what's in this box because I can't read any of the text on here. Uh, I'm assuming it's some of my uh, loot. So we're going to find out. Oh, ah, this is actually different. This is actually cooler than uh, something that you can get. This is actually from China, obviously, because of the box. But this is not one of my ripoff items. This is a PLA issued plate carrier, uh, current issue. Because, you know, I like to research stuff like that. Um, and there's some, some really cool websites on this kind of thing. Uh, but this is a pretty large uh, traditional style uh, plate carrier with all of the pouches. Uh, these are Molly pouches. Yes. So PALS webbing. There are four magazine pouches on the front. There's some sort of... Um, uh, that's a knife sheath. Okay, so there's a knife sheath. Interesting. Uh, these are 40 millimeter or 37. I think they use 37 millimeter or something. Something weird. Uh, what are these? Are tiny little grenades? Like little little VOG grenades? I don't even know. Um, but very interesting design. Rather large drag handle on the back, and there are some GP pouches. So there's not full Molly. They do seem to have a built-in hydration pouch. Yeah, so the armor goes in here. Cool. And they have a built-in hydration pouch right here. That's actually kind of nifty. I kind of like that. Uh, this is also where you access the uh, quick release uh, for the entire plate carrier. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They're doing that. Uh, the quick release system, I'm assuming, is here in the front somewhere. I'm assuming it r routes through here and you grab from the this side, which should make sense. Um, but yeah, they're not running full molly, so they're running pouches down low on the kit which is interesting. Uh, this is some sort of canteen pouch. That's what this looks like. Yep, that's a canteen pouch. And then this is some large, like, night vision-y type pouch. Or maybe this, oh no, this is a gas mask pouch uh, for Seaburn Warfare. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's a few different uh, models. They also have a lot of rip-off Western gear. Uh, if you look at photos of their dudes, um, this is like their conventional uh, military plate carrier. And they've got the elastic cummerbund on the inside. Uh, like some of the older plate carriers from the G-Watt. Our plate carriers, I should say. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty nifty. Uh, it's very interesting. It's different. And uh, it was not cheap either. So I do believe this is a real one, uh, not an Airsoft replica. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Treasures from the Orient. So this is another item that I purchased off of a Chinese website, their Amazon, AliExpress. I uh, don't know what this is, I ordered a bunch of stuff, just to kind of compare, because people are always talking about it. Looks like in this one I've got two items. Oh jeez, that stinks. So you buy, you get smells. Um, don't know what that is. Okay, we'll get to that later. Um, so this is some sort of uh, pouch, or not pouch, small lot. I'm distracted by the smell. Probably like Chinese weed. Okay, okay, so, oh, this is cool. All right, so they don't make, it's very hard for China to rip off holsters. Uh, it's one of the products they cannot make very well. But recently they have tried to make uh, sidecars. So I bought one because I thought this will be fun to see kind of what's going on. Uh, their pen, oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is actually, this is fun. Their pen is uh, very loose. Um, that <laughs> um, okay, this is very fun. So yeah, their, their spine system is not as refined as ours. So the Chinese are not able to do a spine as good as ours. Uh, that's good. That's good news. That's very good news. Um, th th this sidecar setup is rifle mag only. It did not include a pistol mag. Um, these do go together. So that, that will work. That's cool. They've got these weird uh, metal clips that lock. So 
Uh, typically, you'd wear these without a belt, so they're like a deep concealment on jogger pants situation. Um, this is for a uh, this is for a Glock, I want to say. So uh, here's a Gen 5 Glock in the holster. Uh, <laughs> the entire holster can be moved forwards in the holster uh, because the formwork is not well. It's oversized, so not made for uh, an actual uh, Glock, or at least not really. So, so fit is uh, not great. Uh, but technically it is going in. It is it is locking. It will fit an optic. Like, cool, cool. Some of the, the form work. They've got the angle down. they got that figured out. Little wing. Little little claw action. Uh, that actually probably will work okay. That's injection uh, molded. Uh, this is Kydex of some sort, or real Kydex. Um, their hardware sucks. Their uh, rubber washers um are okay they're fine um but the spine is just as you will see is just not um it's not great uh yeah so uh buy american you will get a superior product um and this holster was not that much it wasn't like amazingly cheap it was still i think it was like 30 40 dollars so the percentage oh geez this is not great it's a very very hard to put this together as you will see need it just keeps spinning in the come on come on come on oh. ah there we go okay oh yeah we got it <laughs> this is great uh yeah um anyway yeah so uh, uh interesting bolt that's sticking through here probably from another product they harvested no idea why um, so yeah, so here's a fake sidecar made in China. Uh, I'll let you guys be the judge whether um, the American-made original is better than this. Um, that's for you guys to decide. Um, I already know what I think. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's disgusting. So we've been buying ripoff gear from China and uh, this is another piece that I saw that they manufacture, and so I thought, hey, we'll get one of these because I have a real one, and we'll compare them side by side. So this is... This is a horrible smell. This is the uh, Velocity uh, Quad Mag thing. Just get rid of that. And China's Ranger Green material is not Ranger Green. It is sort of an OD green. It's uh, much more saturated. It's shinier. Um, their hardware, these fake SNS pull tabs, uh, feel much more plasticky and not as rubbery. Um, but I've got a real one right here. So you can kind of see some of the color difference. It'll be hard to see on the camera uh, with the color grade and whatnot. But uh, very interesting, to say the least. The actual ITW buckle feels nicer than this fake one. I mean, they're probably made in the same factory, just different tolerances or plastic material. Um, the sizing will all be the same. The grommets are similar. Ah, that's, they're single stitching, they're not even double stitching. So this seam across the top is all single stitch. And that's, I mean, it's not as durable as a product that is double stitched, um, like the actual Mayflower, the real one. So they're running it across. Uh, they're bar tacking each side. They're bar tacking uh, each side for the buckle as well. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Uh, the next, uh, that's already failing. So it's already pulling apart right here. Um, the interior of each mag cell is probably also only single stitched. Um, I would assume, which is why it's already pulling apart at the edges, and it's not here. They're using a much more robust material on the actual real one uh, for the interior. Some really th thick uh, webbing, and on this guy, it is not quite as it does not feel as thick, and they weren't able to sew it shut as well. So definitely a few corners cut on this product. Um, I'd have to use it a bit to see you know what falls apart first and when. Um, the color does not completely match, so very interesting. So, real one, fake one. That's kind of kind of what they look like. Welcome to.
to another episode of Treasures from the Orient. So I don't know exactly what's in here. Some miscellaneous uh, rip-off items from China. So, boom. One, two, three. Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, shipped to an American address before getting forwarded on to me. Not sus at all. Uh, I ordered it directly from AliExpress, and they've got whatever shipping situation they have. Ooh, this will be, this will be fun. So this is Grand Thumb's uh, chest rig. So naturally, uh, they will be ripping it off over there. Oh my. Uh, and I do have a real one, so I have some experience uh, with this rig. So first off, um, they cannot get, their Ranger Green material in China is not the same as, as Ranger Green here. It is much more saturated. It's sort of a cross between the old OD Green and Ranger Green. Uh, so it does not match completely. The, oh my, the webbing they're using for the Molly is extremely stiff. This is like scuba webbing. I mean, this is, it would work. Um, it just feels very uncomfortable. And they're using the same material for the H harness. This really stiff, nasty, uncomfortable webbing. Um, the buckles they are using are uh, Duraflex. Um, it, it's good hardware. Uh, it's very similar to ITW. Uh, it's just another brand. It, it could be ripoff Duraflex, but it's probably real because I think they get, it gets made over there. Uh, so the harness kind of sucks. Uh, they got some single stitching across the front. I'd have to compare to Mike's to see if it's the same. Um, they are using pack cloth for the rubbery material that Mike has on his rig, which is the uh, tactical tailor, like rubbery sort of material. So they're just using pack cloth, uh, the same material that a lot of LBT products uh, use. So it's not the same. Um, definitely not the same. The elastic is a low quality elastic, uh, poly elastic. This is probably okay for a time, but it's definitely not the same. Uh, flipping it to the back. Oh, look, they have a T-Rex. I wonder why. That's interesting. Um, with the gun and the contacts, that's fun. Pewtac. Um, all right, so yeah, that's uh, you know single stitching everywhere. It's probably fine. Um, their their quality of labor is not uh, is not the most refined for all their box stitching and everything going on here. Uh, it's pretty jank to be perfectly honest. Um, everything here looks you know like it'll work. I mean I don't know for how long, but it will work. Um, that's all single stitch. Along the edges here. I'm assuming on my this is double, but it, it could also be single here at the bottom, so that'd probably be okay. Uh, but all in all, this does feel quite cheap. Um, it feels very cheap. They're using some really uncomfortable materials. Um, this buckle here in the front is the wrong buckle. Um, this is not a great buckle. It's extra fat and large. I'm not a big fan. So that is uh, interesting. They definitely didn't get that right. Um, that's for sure. The one wrap is super short. It's not going to be very useful for actually routing stuff. I would want a little bit more. Um, I think Mike's is a little bit longer. Uh, they do have some padding inside of here. So, and, and Mike's does as well, I, I, I believe. Um, so yeah, there's our ripoff Onward Research rig. And it feels jank. All right, let's see what's, uh, what this is. Oh, geez, how are we gonna open this? Uh... Oh, shameless plug for the knife we sell. Ah, yes, okay, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. This deserves its own episode. Okay, so, um, recently, uh, for a long time, Chinese folks have not been copying our holsters because copying Kydex is actually very hard. It's not something they can do super well. Um, but I did notice that they actually started having um, Ragnarok SDs, Ragnarok's uh, sidecar, which I talked about earlier. Um, so I thought, hey, I'm going to go buy one of each because I want to play with those and see what they're like and see, you know, see how good or bad they are. Um, so they are sold in retail packaging. So I'm assuming in China and airsoft stores, uh, boom, it looks just like this. Maybe in Japan as well. Um, the SKU, it says lightweight. Kydex Tactical, made in China, cool. Uh, so they're very upfront about where it's made, obviously. Um, so, pretty much every holster comes with a ripoff 
I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a ripoff. Uh, G-Code Belt Slide. So some of you guys are going to be familiar with this, obviously. It's very interesting. I mean, it, should, it, it, it feels about the same as the real one. Um, and then here's the holster itself. So it does appear to be made out of uh, 125 Kydex, although it feels much squishier than ours. Um, it may actually not be 125. <laughs> it looks like 125. I don't know. Um, but they've got the little wings here. They've got the buffing. Uh, made for an X300. They've got the, the ribs. They, they got that right. The little swirl up here. Nice, nice. Um, they even have some nice uh, laser engraving. X300 Type 1. Um, here along the top. That is a very nice, nice little touch right there. It's very cool. Um, but now to find out about the retention. Because I'm unconvinced the retention is going to be that good. Um, off of a X300. Because it was absolutely trash on the other one. Okay, well, the gun can just come out of the center. And it's very rattly. So the form factor is not great. I mean, you could see it right here. They are not getting the form work that we are getting with our Ragnarok SDs. So there's going to be retention problems. The X300 is super mushy. So I don't expect there to be great retention with these holsters. Uh, they're made for airsoft guns, which, I mean, probably works fine. But uh, mag release is covered up a little bit, so it will engage. They're on the back slightly, uh, but it's a pretty close copy. Um, it's actually, it's not, it's not as bad as the sidecar, but it's not great either. So there's that one. I also got a, uh, a multi-cam. So same thing, it comes with a G-code uh, thing. And they are doing a hydro dip. So you'll see on the inside here, I don't know if you can see that. Um, they're like the fixtures like holding uh, the holster as they dip it. So it's not an actual multicam kydex like what we have. Um, and they're actually having to scrape away some kydex for the laser uh, machine, I guess, uh, to laser on X300 Type 1. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of got that light hydro dip finish um, that does not look the same. And, that you know, it's, it's, it's very similar to this one uh, right here. So oh, very interesting. The, the the actual form work on this one's better. They're getting tighter angles on this one. Uh, so that's probably a quality control thing. This one's all mushy, and this one's actually pretty uh, a little bit tighter. So that's fine. Over here we have a Ragnarok. Again, super mushy. This is like some of my early work, early Ragnarok holsters. Uh, so the form work isn't get, the the fit isn't going to be super good. Uh, they got the belt slot, belt loop holes here. They have the same holes on the back, which I'm sure will be fine and fit. Uh, it is optic cut. Fit is not the worst in the world. Um, it's not bad. It's not as good as ours, but, you know, the gun goes in, and it, it should stay decently. They're getting pretty close to the mag release. Mag release should be all right. Um, and I don't believe this Kydex is as thick as ours. The buffing's not as good. The hardware is not as good. At least I don't believe it's, it doesn't look as good, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, there's a fake Ragnarok. It's not horrible, actually. It's not terrible. And uh, they're lasering on the side. G, X300. Nice little touch. Boom. And they're going to run into the same issues with a, uh, a multi-cam one because they're, they're dipping. So the inside's going to be all nasty and they're going to have to laser. Um, but yeah, so there's some fake Chinese T-Rex Arms products. And um, these are better than the sidecar. The sidecar was trash. Uh, these are a little bit better. Um, and then the G-Code belt slot actually feels pretty good. Uh, doesn't feel horrible. But, I mean, who's to say the plastic is actually um, as good as the actual G-Code one? So diving further into the... Chinese ripoff market. I have something here. I don't know what. Aha! Another one of our products. Good. Um, this is a Orion from China, which they've been ripping off for a very long time. Uh, quite a while, actually. And it comes installed with an inner belt, which is actually <laughs> very convenient, <laughs> to be honest. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so the rubber material on the inside, not at all the same. 
it's it gets wrinkly as you can see um it might unwrinkle once you wear it i kind of doubt it uh that's not great um it's not the same material as we use um the material we use is actually custom made this is something else probably off the shelf that they have over there um it feels a lot more tacky and kind of um so yeah not a big not a big fan of that but whatever um the squadron material they have is not the same. Uh, their ranger green is also not the same as ours. It is this this ranger green is actually much more olive and yellow, um, so it's not at all the same. Um, the hardware they have going on here, this triglide is absolutely massive. It's like a pirate belt buckle. Um, the cobra buckle is not a cobra buckle because that would obviously cut into their margin. Uh, so they have some sort of ripoff, um, which does not feel as good. It doesn't feel as uh, sturdy or locks in as nicely. It may work the same. Um, I mean, it should work okay. It just doesn't feel as good. Um, the inner belt is uh, double layered scuba webbing, so very similar to ours. There probably isn't a massive change here. Um, they've got a hank material that they're using to suspend the clash hooks, which are shiny. And, uh, you know, they, they, they is what they is. Um, so yeah, that's a fake Orion belt. Um, my main question would be how tough the uh, acronym or squadron material they're using is. Um, and if it's the same as the stuff we have over here in the States, that would be my main question. And uh, the inside, this sort of weird inner material, I'm not a huge fan of. It's a little too slippery. If this gets wet, this is actually going to be slippery on your body, um, is what this feels like. So, yeah, it's really interesting. First time seeing one of uh, the fake Orions that comes out of China. Gets sold to airsofters over there. Probably some PLA guys as well. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Welcome to another episode of Treasures from the Orient. I have a few more items that I sourced from China where they rip off our products, products from other companies. I suspect this might be someone from someone else, but I'm not sure. I'm curious to see what the quality's like. Sometimes it's just as good, sometimes it's worse. Uh, so far, it's been worse. Uh, I wouldn't say it's better. Ah, yes. I was looking forward to this. Okay, so this is an AC1 uh, that they make over there. And uh, they're actually very uh, convenient in that they uh, include some extra parts. So they have our uh, front flap GP. Um, wow, they have some different colored like material. Uh, so this is like a khaki zipper material. It's not coyote brown. Um, it's just very different. Their grommet is, uh, eh, it's all right. That's uh, fine. Um, webbing or the elastics kind of, eh, kind of. It's the shiny, like, polyelastic. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, but, okay, cool. That, that's that. Uh, ooh, this feels... Their tweed material sucks. <laughs> this feels absolutely horrible. Um, definitely not the same material or the same quality as what we have here. Um, it just is all shiny and nasty feeling. Um, it's silky feeling. It's just very odd and, like, weird. Um, so, it also they also include a shingle. So again, you kind of get a little of everything out of the box. That's kind of nice. Um, they got multi-cam down here. And that's a nice touch. Um, and they're using sort of this uh, poly-elastic stuff. Um, it's not quite the same, but, you know, it should be okay. Uh, for the, the, this, this right here should be fine. Um, looks like they assembled this backwards. Yeah, so they assembled this backwards, which you could swap it. Um, so large pouches here in the front, and then medium and small. So they've got that going. Same elastic material as this, or that that really thick poly uh, elastic stuff. Not what we use. Um, the squadron material, super light and weird. It's just very different. I'm not a big fan. It just it just feels like ugh. Anyway, um, the it this buckle right here. Um, also, just feels very different than like the standard Swift Clip buckle that everyone sources here in the States. Um, this is unmarked, so I'm assuming this is a ripoff. It's not Durflex, it's not ITW, it's just their own sort of, you know, buckle. Um, who knows what the braking strength is? Um, who knows how the fit is? I mean, it's probably fine. Uh, it's probably not the end of the world. Let's leave that off. Um, the Cordura feels 
it's definitely shiny. Uh, under night vision, this is probably going to be very reflective. Uh, just based on looking at the material, I highly doubt it's IR reducing. Uh, I find that very unlikely. Uh, the mesh material seems okay. Possibly. I'd have to look in at the sewing a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, the, the Cordura itself is just very shiny and bright compared to the standard multicam that we have. Um, so I definitely wouldn't be buying fake multicam stuff, that's for sure, because this is all extremely bright compared to standard multicam. Um, so yeah, so that's a fake AC-1, um, made in China, uh, for Airsoft, or, um, there's PLA guys running around with Airsoft gear over there. Um, the material is, a lot of it is completely different. Um, I'll have to test this under night vision to see what it's like, uh, but this multicam color is very bright. It's more sort of a khaki color. Um, uh, their tweeve sucks, and, um... Uh, it would, it'll take some testing to figure out what's going on with the stitching, but, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. It's always fun to get, uh, imitations of your gear. So I've got another item here from China Land. So I've been ordering various rip-offs, checking them out, seeing what's going on. And, uh, this should be a fun one. Ah, this is a fun one. So, uh, there are, um, there's pictures of PLA dudes running around Safari Land looking holsters. And they could be real Safari Lands. They could be importing them through various means. Uh, there's, there's folks here in the U.S. who actually buy here and then ship over there. Um, or, or actually someone organized. This is an actual Safari Land that's made in China. So it is a ripoff. Made in China, they're very upfront about that. And they've got some nice advertising. Uh, this is some nice retail packaging for airsoft stores, probably over there in Asia. Um, you know, Japan, Vietnam, China, wherever. Um, so this is what it looks like. Their Ranger Green, I've said it and I will say it again, is not American Ranger Green. Um, it is an olive color. It's a little bit brighter. Um, it's, it's actually much closer to Israeli uh, green, actually, which is interesting. It's very fascinating. Um, their thigh strap is a copy of the Safari Land thigh strap, so they're using the same Duraflex buckle. Um, I actually tried to source the same buckle for our thigh strap years ago, like eight years ago, and decided against it. Um, so they've got a thigh strap that actually feels, it feels pretty good. It's got the silicone uh, non-slip material that Safari Land has as well. Um, this is actually a pretty nice thigh strap. Now, I don't know if the, the sewing, like the, you know, the seams and all that are gonna be fine, uh, but this does appear to be a real Duraflex buckle. Um, unlike some of the other buckle hardware I've seen that they rip off and then don't put logos on, uh, this is actually a real one, um, which granted is probably still made over there. Uh, their hardware, uh, from what I've seen, um, is not is not great. Uh, this plastic material they're using for the UBL seems very brittle. Um, its breaking point is probably uh, much closer and sooner than regular Safari Land hardware. Uh, the QLS, you know, who knows? I haven't used it yet. Uh, hardware here actually seems okay. Seems fine. Uh, this also feels a lot lighter than an actual Safari Land holster, which is interesting. So the plastic that they are using is not the same density as a Safari Land holster. QLS does work. It's probably it's probably cross compatible. Let's find out. So using uh, an actual Safari Land QLS uh, fork. Yep, it works. They'll have copied that perfectly um, as far as like fitment and everything. So I've got a Glock 17 here with a D-Pro X300. Okay, well, um, their optic hood thing is already uh, interacting with the D-Pro, um, which it should not be that close. Uh, the Safari Land 6354DO hood is not compatible with the D-Pro unless you modify it, but this is a little too close. So, I need an RMR. Oh, shoot. Okay, so, um, I just put this Glock 19 in with an RMR. Um, okay, well, that right there kind of seals the deal. I can't get the gun out. The retention system is not functioning. Oh wait, I think I just did. 
Oh, yeah, there I did it. Yeah. Um, it was not catching on the trigger guard where it should. Um, so that's not great. It's definitely not as uh, refined. Um, the Cordura material is also not applied super clean. Um, it's got some unclean edges here. Um, there's like, you know, just some weird stuff going on. Um, but yeah, this pistol is not interacting with the ALS super well. As a normal 19 with an X300 would interact with a Safari Land holster. So this is a no, no bueno. So even though, jeez, oh there we go. Okay, so I have to pull down. Okay, so to draw, I have to push the pistol down as hard as I can then hit the thingy, then push forward, then lift up. Anyway, so, um, Airsoft 6354DO, uh, do not recommend uh, for real firearms. Um, and it feels a lot lighter, and who knows about the plastic density and, um, you know, what's going on with the holster. But very interesting nonetheless, because um, these are all over, over there in China. And this hardware is all like shiny. Welcome back to another episode of Treasures from the Orient. So I have a few more packages that are coming in because I ordered a bunch of stuff and it takes a while to get it, you know, shipped across from China. So not sure what this one is. There is a main China tag right here. That must be like an import thing. Uh, I only just noticed that, so that's interesting. Okay, let's see. What is this? Uh, oh, oh, I think this is going to be cool. However, we're not going to know a lot about this uh, right now because this is going to require some serious testing. Okay, this is fun. What a nice box. That makes it all worth it. Okay, this is an optic that almost... Well, not every. A lot of gun industry companies have started to sell. Now, they attribute their own name to it, and they attribute their own price. I've seen these sold for as much as $300. This exact optic right here by certain companies who I will not aim, name, who you guys can name in the comments. I think I paid uh, $50 for this. Or $60, bucks, something like that. So, yeah, there's no reason to go spend $300 on these. This is basically a Chinese Acro. Um, it does have some... Slight differences here and there. I ordered it with the rifle mount, so it's a. I think it's an absolute co-witness. Um, they did add little backup irons in here that the Acro does not have. So they took some creative liberties um, with this optic, which I find interesting. Um, even the zeroing, like turrets, are a little bit different. So like, that's actually kind of cool. Instead of doing a full direct rip off of the Acro, they kind of like made some little modifications here and there. Uh, but it's basically still a Chinese Acro. Um, I do have an optic plate uh, for. It says this is an adapter, so this will go into a RMR uh, cut, so like on an MOS or something, and then I can drop this optic on there. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to test this on an actual firearm, so there's not much I can tell you guys right now, except uh, don't fall for the gun industry companies selling this exact optic for more than probably $100. Um, it, realistically, importing it and fees and cogs and taxes and like all of that, um, you know, they're not going to be selling this for $60 here in the States. Like they're going to have to mark it up to probably 110 to turn a profit. So that I understand. Um, this one, uh, here's an MOS plate. So this would drop straight onto an MOS and take this and this would drop into an RMR cut. So that's kind of cool. Uh, does it come with a battery already? Uh, doesn't look like it does unless this needs to be tightened down. Let's tighten this down and find out. Uh, nope, no battery. Uh, so it's a piece of crap. Uh, no, <laughs> because <laughs> uh, it doesn't come with a battery, but we will get that going. So, um, this optic, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, one of you guys will have to jump in here uh, and say what it's called, and every company calls it something different. Um, but uh, I'm going to have to throw this on a rifle and then a pistol and actually find out uh, what is going on with it. But I do want to take it off this mount and see what happens. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tight. It's not too bad. It looks identical to an acro cut right there. <laughs> Funny. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see if it actually goes on a... Okay. So, here's a real acro compared to this one. Uh, you'll see some differences. Um, they added the battery over here to the side. 
Uh, the acro has it on this side right here, so it is different. Uh, plus and minus buttons are different. Um, this is a P2, and this is... They're probably cloning a P1 is what they're doing. Um, but the zero turrets are obviously uh, different. In fact, the one on the airsoft, on the, the one on, on this one is actually probably better because you can get more tools in there um, than the actual aimpoint one, which is a hex key. Uh, so that's kind of nifty. Um, and then the mounting interface on the Acro is on this side and on the Chinese optic is on the opposite side. But now let's find out if this optic can even go on a slide cut Glock and see if this even works. Oh my gosh, I don't think this is going to fit. Okay, so that is not going to fit a slide specifically cut for an acro. It is too long in the front, it's too snooty. I could bandsaw that, or I could grind that, I suppose. Um, but when I line it up with the actual pick section, it is just too long in the front to attach. So that is not going to work. But I'm assuming if I take an MOS that sits kind of tall and I add the MOS plate, then it would actually work. Um, or vice versa, the RMR plate. Drop that on top, it sits up above the slide, and then I could probably mount this to a pistol. Um, so once again, buying something from China for cheap um, is not necessarily going to get you the same result as specific weapons accessories made uh, for specific weapons that are real. Uh, you are going to run into some issues. Welcome back. You know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I have a package with an anonymous item inside. Let's find out what's in here. Oh shoot, okay, this is gonna upset some folks. Possibly, okay. So they make everyone's nylon in China. You guys know it. So these, this is a Spiritus uh, split rig. The Alpha 34 or whatever it's called. I can't remember. I don't actually have a real one. Um, I would need a real one to really compare. But uh, I bought this for cheap monies. And it is uh, very Chinese. I'll just put it that way. Um, Spiritus' stuff has been cloned or copied for a very long time. Buckle hardware, just like on pretty much everything else, feels really flimsy and brittle. It's not real ITW or, or even Duraflex hardware. The multicam on this looks a little bit better. Their, their acronym material is a little bit better than their Cordura, but their Cordura material is still much brighter uh, than the stuff we have here. Their Velcro also feels kind of funny. Everything is single stitched, so single stitch everywhere. I'm assuming Spirit is double stitches. Most people here in the States are doing double stitching. So this is a split rig, so you've got two buckles in the front. That can be adjusted. Molly laser cut pals webbing. Some weird bronze shock cord that's fat. It's not going to be anything like the spiritus webbing that they're going to use. They're going to use much nicer stuff. Uh, this elastic is really lightweight and skinny. Probably slimmer than what spiritus is using as well. I'm pretty familiar with what they with some of the materials they use. And so yeah, so this is a ripoff spiritus alpha rig. So that is interesting. I also purchased one of their spud pouches. I also don't have a real one of these. I need to get one at some point. Um, so once again, the multicam is not like a perfect multicam color. They're still using this bronze sort of shot cord that's nasty. And the pouch itself does not look dimensionally the same as an actual spud. This looks a lot larger. I don't have a real one, but just from photos online, this seems a lot larger than an actual spud pouch. I could be wrong, though. They may have gotten the dimensions wrong. Um, on the back, yeah, this multicam print is just very, it's very flat and it's very, like, weird looking. Um, so, yeah, they've got stiffened molly, I would assume, just like the real thing. It's getting it tucked in there. Uh, like so, and then you pull this tight for the mouth uh, of the actual pouch. Just kind of cinch it down, kind of like the Cry Smart Pouch, uh, like that. And you can pull this out. So there's the actual spud with all their little crinkle, the Spiritus crinkle cut. This is obviously a ripoff. And uh, 
I don't know how this Chinese like acronym or squadron material, how it's going to hold up. Um, I'm assuming it's not going to be as high quality as the American stuff. Um, I also don't think this is an exported American fabric. They do that on some stuff, but this really cheap nylon, I think they're making all this over there. Uh, there's no way they would be able to imp export our expensive fabric and make this stuff for cheap. Um, I think this is all foreign material. I could be wrong, but I think it's all foreign material they make, and that's why it's not IR reducing, and the camo pattern itself is like off. It's not an actual multi-cam because it's made over there. It's not actually made in America and shipped over. So that's a couple of uh, Spiritus items uh, that they uh, manufacture. Uh, single stitching once again here along the mouth, so that's fun. And a uh, little bitty grommet on the bottom. Nice, nice. And uh, so yeah, there's the alpha rig with, oh yeah, let's look at the elastic real quick. Oh. Oh, that feels horrible. It's so thick. And like, it, it's, it feels like it was just printed directly on top. Oh, that feels horrible. <laughs> so anyway, so they're obviously subbing in all sorts of weird materials. But yeah, there's a Spiritus uh, alpha split rig and a spud pouch. Uh, I know I would much prefer having the real thing, uh, but yeah. Here's a couple other uh, couple other ripoffs.